Hello, everybody. My name is Amr Asher. I am the Assistant Director of Research at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society and also part of the Secretariat for the Global Network of Internet and Society Centers. And today's conversation, I'm really excited to talk with one of the centers who's been very active in the Global Network of Internet and Society um, group for the past couple of years. And I'd like to introduce you to Professor Susan Aronson, who is a professor at the George Washington University and also the director of the Digital Trade and Data Governance Hub, as well as her colleague, Thomas Stewart, who is the director of research at the Digital Trade and Data Governance Hub. I'm really excited to talk to you both because I've, I've followed the work of the hub since it was initiated last year um, or a, a year or two ago, and also um, through Susan's work over the past couple of years. So welcome to both of you. My first question for you is just to tell us a little bit more about, uh, about the hub and the work that you're doing. Thomas and I worked together when he was at um, Bulgi. Istanbul Bilgi University. Istanbul Bilgi University. Another network of um, center member. Yes. Right. We had received a grant from Eli Sugarman at ULIT to look at whether or not there were shared definitions, norms, and strategies as to what are the barriers to cross-border data flows. And so we did a survey and we, inter we did um, six case studies and we found what we thought we were going to find, which was very disturbing, which was all these nations were alleging that other nations had adopted all these barriers to cross-border data flows, but there was no shared definition as to what a barrier was. For example, is net neutrality rules an incentive or a barrier? Disincentive. Um, there were no shared strategies. Like, what do you do? How do you respond? Um, do you put in place tariffs? That doesn't seem like a good idea. And as a result of that, as part of, so we did these interviews uh, around the world. Our case studies were Brazil, US, Canada, uh, the EU, Russia. Who am I missing? What country am I missing? I guess there was no Asian country. In any case, um, and what was pretty shocking is almost everywhere we went, the policymakers that we talked with had like, some of them were very sophisticated. Some of them were making legislation or uh, regulations and they seemed to have very little understanding of what they were working on. And that frightened me. And so we put in proposals to as many foundations as we could to try to get support to educate policymakers. And so what the hub does is until March, we went to people on the Hill and we went to people in the executive branch and said, what would you like to learn more about? And then we give them either free training or a free event or um, a luncheon. So we've done everything from digital trade to should there be standards for AI? Um, to why in the world does Denmark have a tech ambassador? And, you know, to Silicon Valley and to, you know, Chinese tech companies. And, you know, I, I think those are really interesting things, but we, we aren't reaching the public as much as I would like. And I, I'm not sure how to do that. Um, and I thought the best way would be to partner with as many groups as possible. But um, I think in these times, it's also kind of hard to get people to pay attention. They say they care about things and they have other priorities, which I think are more urgent, like getting a job or feeding your family in times of COVID-19 or avoiding COVID-19. So, um, so we did move to these webinars online um, we still do training for policymakers, but we're trying to rethink the strategy in that sometimes people, we know that a lot of times people want to learn the news of the day. So, you know, like everybody's concerned about TikTok and what bands do, but maybe you know, a better way, you know, should we find ways to suggest what they should learn while being tactful about it? 
um, and then how to get them to spend 45 minutes, you know, learning those stuff. Another thing is I would like to set up study groups for various issues. And I haven't yet figured that out, but that's something. And then I'm gonna let Thomas talk to you now about our major project, which Thomas is directing. <laughs> Excellent. Th and thank you for that really helpful Thanks. overview, Susan. I know that so many of these issues are really core to actually what so many other network of centers members are, are working on. And this question in particular, I would love to continue the conversation on how we think about informing and educating policymakers as an audience versus the public, maybe not versus, but how to think of those two things together and also as individual communities as we think about how we produce our, our research products and who we intend who we intend them for. Um, I kind of think about that every day because I, just as an aside, I worked on trade policy before I wrote my dissertation. And my dissertation was, well, how do policymakers talk about trade and what do the public hear? And it really didn't change for from the 30s to and then it changed for a while. And now it's, you know, under Trump, it's become this crazy thing. I won't go into that much detail, but it, we do need to think differently about how we get the public to care about that because you do see this very strange dichotomy in public opinion. They say they care about protecting their personal data and that's not how they act. Um, so, but Thomas will talk about the study that we're yes, doing. Yes, please. Yeah. So, so the Digital trade, the data governance and digital trade hub beyond just trying to uh, educate policymakers and the public, we've branched off to also doing research at the hub. And the current research project that we're starting that's going to last for the next year is basically trying to map out data governance across the world. Uh, we have a selection of 40 countries from around the world that we're going to be looking at, and we're going to look at where kind of how data governance is happening in these 40 countries from their international agreements to domestic laws and regulations. And we're gonna be looking at data governance from the standpoint of personal data protection to looking at how trade secrets can be used by you know, companies to, to control and hold on to data to also how uh, governments open data policies to share data. So we kind of want to take as full a view as we can of how data governance is happening while also a very narrow scope of, you know, only, only policies that are directly governing or explicitly governing data. And we kind of want to, you know, just have this mapping uh, and beyond that, we'll be looking at some case studies within it uh, to just basically uh, try and understand what the current state of data governance around the world looks like. Excellent. Thank and then you. The, there will be follow on to that. The grant um, is on not only what does it look like comparing it across countries, but also what is comprehensive data governance at this moment in time? And then are nations using data governance to achieve comparative advantage in data, economies of scale and scope? Um, better quality data, mixing of public and proprietary data, et cetera. And um, so I think that you maybe just answered the question I was both going to ask you, which is what you're most excited about. It sounds like this is a really ambitious and globally oriented project around data governance. So I'll ask a spin on that, which is more, how might you be, because you are doing this mapping of data governance around the world, what, um, how are you kind of working with others in the space who are also thinking about data governance and studying data governance? And it doesn't have to necessarily be members within the network of internet and society centers, but I know a few groups like Mozilla and others are thinking about how to, how to better understand the ecosystem of data governance. So what are ways that um, you, you uh, work with or partner with or study or learn from others within the space? Yeah, so right now we're we're just kicking this project off, uh, you know, just starting in the last week or two, uh, officially starting. Um, so we have been, you know, just within our kind of community or our network, reaching out to people and, you know, getting feedback, discussing uh, like our own 
you know, how we're, we plan on going about this project, but I know we also have some, some longer term goals of hopefully, hopefully incorporating the two sides of the hub, the, the, the trainings and the webinar side from the actual research side, and hopefully bringing in some other, some other experts into the hub and, and providing some webinars on what data governance is and just trying to get as many viewpoints as possible to you know share with both the public and policymakers. Yeah, we don't know the folks at Mozilla, although I do remember Mark Sussman and uh, a while back we did try to get some money from uh, Alan Davidson. I think he's now the lobbyist for Mozilla um, in DC, but, um, but in terms of other knock, I mean, we probably should um, put out a call to ask them to comment on our work, especially for the 40 countries. But I haven't seen others doing that. And so, you know, I think that would be really helpful to us. But basically the way we've done it is called out chits from friends to like review our work. However, we are also, we've been working pretty closely with the World Bank. Uh, people on this because as part of the World Development Report, as you probably know, um, they have sent out a survey to 90 governments on their data governance. But they looked at it as um, more like, is there a law? And what and and then they're interested in enforcement. And what where we're different from them is we're looking at different types of data. We're looking at the mixing of data. We're looking also at various stages, the when of data governance. When is data regulated? So is it regulated at collection? Is it regulated at monetization? Um, you know, those kind of questions are kind of ta taunting us um, and haunting us. And I hope that that will lead to a better understanding. But if, uh, if you know of other groups doing that, we've also had a lot of conversations with the folks at UNCTAD who, as you probably know, you know, say, well, this is what good data governance looks like. It's, it's laws on spam and you know, digital signatures and, you know, uh, some sort of personal data protection law. But beyond that, they don't really tell governments what good data governance looks like. And I know that's not a static concept. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's um, I think that's that's right. And hopefully, this the beginning of this process and this video and working with the network of centers. I think absolutely asking folks for comments. There are definitely others. I can think of colleagues in Brazil who are working on issues of data governance, in addition to many other countries that I think would be very willing to to offer comments and help help review. So um, we should think about how how to best position you to, in order to to do that. I would love that because. The more feedback we get, like we're, we just sent out the questionnaire to a bunch of people, but part of the problem is um, the questionnaire is kind of freaky in that it's, it po posits a vision of data governance. It, it also has, we're trying to look at because we're trying to look at how governments might be moving in this direction, it's a, it's a, so we do have like a question that looks to collective data rights, which I don't think any government has done anything on yet. Another area we look to um, is the mixing of data and whether or not there might at some point be rules governing it. Many people think not because they think it's, you know, personal and non-personal and that's all we need to care about. Uh, or, you know, there's some sort of proprietary data rules that allow the firm to control that. Well, people may not like that at a certain point, especially related to what is public data regarding smart cities as example, or um, I don't know. I don't have a, a good example beyond that, but the more feedback we can get, honestly, we'll do a better job. Great, great. So my final question for you is, um, 
what are opportunities for collaboration? And I've heard a couple on this call so far. So you have a wonderful webinar series that you run. You have a, a mapping that you're engaged in and you're looking for different partners. You have a, a couple of other modalities in which you've talked about collaboration, uh, both with the Global Network of Inter Internet and Society Centers, but also um, generally, like if you have uh, PhD positions and others. So we'd love to just hear what are opportunities for collaboration with, um, with the hub? Well, one thing that we've only done for digital trade, but we plan to do for data governance is we, we have a listing of scholars and we list their expertise so that people can quickly find a, an expert in an area. So for digital trade, I think we have 25 people on our website with their emails and stuff like that and an overview of what they do research on. Um, and I'd really like to do that for data governance um, in general. So here's your personal, you know, here's Cameron Carey, an expert on, you know, personal data. And, and here's Urs Gasser, you know, an expert on interoperability, you know, um, and your colleague who does AI principles, whose name I forgot, but, um, you know, so that kind of thing, we really need to do it. Yeah, a couple, there's a, lot, a couple of colleagues who do AI principles yes. in the book of At project. the OECD. We had him as a speaker. Oh, I know, I know Lorraine Pigula, um at OECD, but I'm not. Oh, uh, yeah, she's at OECD. Yes, but your colleague at, at Berkman Klein. Oh, Ryan, Ryan Budish. Yeah, Ryan Budish. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then there's Jess Field, who's at the clinic. There's like a bunch of people doing AI principles. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. Any, Thomas, anything you, you'd like to add to either opportunities for collaboration or just anything else? Yeah, I would definitely say as, as a hub, we're always looking to basically connect experts to people who, who want to learn, uh, both policymakers and the public. So I think bringing in experts to you know, be on webinars would be, would be great. Uh, we're always looking for new topics too, to cover in webinars. So uh, you know, if collaborating in that way would be really great. 